up, squad? I'm Camille, and I'm catching up with Wooly, one of, I would think, the most diverse Let's Play streamers out there because you do more than just Let's Play. You also have this whole history in the FGC as well as a huge anime and manga fan and just anything nerdy. How do you balance all of those things on your channel? Extremely poorly. <laughs> Anybody who likes the stuff that I, that you mentioned is looking for more of it and it's so hard to juggle all these pizzas. How do you juggle the pizzas? Yeah. I do my best. Yeah. It's well, rough. Well, I feel like you're doing a really good job. You have a huge following, a great community um, that shows you so much love. When did you realize you got to that point that you were able to do this full time and how much are your fans a part of that? I realized it the moment that I took a look, the moment I quit my job, right? <laughs> the moment I realized that, why am I doing this nine to five every day for that much money, when this much money for this much effort and time nets this? It's just A plus B equals hand in your, 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 your two weeks notice, do YouTube full time, everybody loves it. Plus it's video games and anime and fun and manga and like why wouldn't you want to put all of that into it? And because it's those topics, the fans are extremely passionate about it. Everybody that gets into stuff like JoJo, like we had a connection earlier about JoJo. We love JoJo. We, we love live that JoJo life, yeah. right? So that's so those people are like, yo, did someone say JoJo? And my channel's like, yeah, us, what's up? <laughs> All right, so yeah. Hey, Kira, hey. Yeah. let's talk JoJo. Like that passion translates into people that are like ride or die. Like they watch, they hang out, they, they talk, we go back and forth and like they're just here for it. They show up for whatever, it's the best. That's awesome, but since when you first started, it must be different than now where it's so saturated with so many streamers um, and personalities on the internet. Do you find that stressful to manage in terms of your business? It's, it is hard in terms of like, you're, you're kind of, you're jumping into the reddest ocean if you're jumping into YouTube and Twitch now. Um, fortunately, my old channel, before Wooly Versus, I was with Super Best Friends and that group started early on in and we were pretty early in the Let's Play days. So we were able to like make an impact and kind of create a fun dynamic that people wanted to see. And uh, because of that, people kind of grew to learn our personalities and that just stood out for the last nine years practically, you know? So I feel that even though it's hard to jump in now, like sometimes they say, what's the best advice? And it's like, start 10 years ago. I, it's it, it's kind of rough. There's other things you can do to stand out, but we happen to really just be in the right place at the right time. And you know, preparation plus uh, opportunity, or something about luck, I don't know. There's look it up, look there. it up. There's a saying that you know, works for this. Let's pretend I totally nailed it. He nailed it. Perfect. But in terms of all the platforms that are out there, how do you know which platform is right for your audience? Because that's been a lot, a topic of much conversation for a lot of streamers. We're seeing them move to other platforms. How do you know when it's time for you to make that move or how do you know when it's time to just stay where you are? By putting my finger in every pie. So I got that podcast. Usually when you start a podcast of some kind, you have a game plan of some sort. You kind of think you know what you're gonna do. You have some structure in mind, something. I got that Twitch stream, the Twitch stream archives. I'm also recording separately and turning them into a YouTube episode. Oh my God. I am making sure that I'm touching a little bit of everything and seeing the way it goes. Cause we ain't taking no prisoners. Even in those slopes, you wanna make sure that you have the ability to adjust and to, you know, maybe put something else into another project or just, yeah, keep your eyes on everything, you know? Um, and, and as a result, doing things like streaming and then using that for YouTube and then having a podcast go separately, which I turned those podcast clips into YouTube clips. It's just this big incestuous content zone. So if you want to give us the inside scoop because you know, we got that Jojo love, will you move to Mixer or Facebook gaming? Cause I see like everyone moving. If there's something really cool happening over there, I won't say no, I won't say no. All right, I like that, keeping your hands in every pot. One thing that you've always kept your hands in is the FGC. You started off there, grassroots, and um, even now with doing uh, casual games, you still maintain that focus. How do you see the FGC, how it changed when you first started compared to now, and like some of these new kids coming in wanting to succeed in the FGC, what would you say to them? Make sure that 
you have fun when you play. Make sure that you're not taking the loss. Like if you, if it, it feels bad to lose, right? But if you have that desire to improve, that's the best thing that you can hold on to and take into the training room to practice and find out, you know, why you lost. When you want to challenge someone else, like that spirit to like constantly improve yourself will carry you through every loss when you're playing not to win, but to learn. So that's, I think, the most important thing for new players right now. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely, my pleasure. Thank you.